All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to watching Casio. So a few weeks ago, I did a mod to my AE1300 watch, which I think came out really nice. So what I did is I added some blue coloring to the LCD screen, sandpapered the case a little bit, and also added this cool stretchy single pass strap. So I think this one came out really nice. Thanks a lot for all the comments and feedback on this one. I really appreciate it. And today I wanted to do something a little different with the Casio AE1200, the Casio Royale watch. So what I did is I cleaned up the dial a lot. I left the case the way it is. I removed some of the lettering. I added a green coloring over the LCD and then I also swapped out the white LEDs for these super bright, super cool green LEDs. And I think it came out great. So just to let you know, I have never soldered anything in my life. <laughs> this was honestly the first time I ever attempted soldering, but I did see some postings and some videos out there of people modifying the LEDs so I said hey what the heck you know if they can do it I can do it too so I went ahead and I grabbed a soldering iron from Amazon and I did my best but let me tell you this was such a pain these LEDs are super tiny I actually had to go through three different watches because I messed up the uh, circuit board so badly but I did eventually get it working, and here's a package of LEDs that I bought from eBay. You can get about 100 of them for only a few bucks, so it's super cheap. But man, they are small. And like I said, I've never soldered anything, and my vision isn't too good close up, so trying to get these tiny, tiny LEDs hooked up to the circuit board was, was really a challenge. But eventually I did get it to work, and I am pretty happy with the end result. So I've got this cool looking black watch with a green overlay. And if I go ahead and turn off one of my lights over here, uh, you can see that the two LEDs at the bottom are very, very bright. Uh, even in a dark room, they're incredibly bright. You can probably use it as a flashlight. But I think this strap is really cool along with the black and green aesthetic. I think it looks really sharp. It was a challenging and frustrating but very fun project and I'm really glad I got it done. So why don't we check out this new mod, and I'll walk you through step by step of how it's done. So let's jump right in and see what we can make. So here is the kit that I used to do this project. And again, I've never soldered anything in my life. And honestly, I probably chose the wrong project to start out with because these LEDs are just so incredibly tiny. But nonetheless, I bought this kit off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. It's pretty cheap. It comes with a decent soldering iron that has adjustable temperatures. And the case that it comes in also has a bunch of goodies inside. Uh, you've got some solder. You've got some wire, some wire strippers. You also got some extra soldering tips and a solder sucker down there below. And it also came with a base that you can use to rest your soldering iron when it's not in use. So one of the things that I found out is that the solder that this came with, I don't know, maybe it's too thick or maybe it's the wrong material or something, but the first time I attempted to solder the LED to the PCB was just a complete mess. There was solder everywhere. It wasn't sticking properly, so I had to find another way. So I went online and I checked out some more videos and some more postings, and I actually came across this awesome tool, which is soldering paste. And what this allows you to do is that you can just squirt a little bit of the soldering paste directly onto the metal pad on the PCB. And then you hold the LED in your hand with some tweezers you balance it right on top of the paste, and then you use your soldering gun set to 300 degrees to just simply melt the paste, and it forms a solid soldering joint between the LED and the PCB. And one other thing that I wish I had when I began is this little roll of soldering braid. So this stuff actually helps you clean the pads on the PCB. And I think that was one of my first problems is that the metal pads were just all gunked up and were caked on with solder and I couldn't get it right. So you just place this little strip over the pads, touch the soldering gun to it, and it sucks up all the excess solder on the pads. So this was extremely valuable. And here are the 1206 LEDs that I got off eBay. There's about a hundred of them for a few bucks. 
And these are actually slightly bigger than the original LEDs on the PCB that came with the watch. But yeah, you can get a whole roll of these. Uh, they're very tiny, so they come on a little strip. And all you have to do is just pull back the tape a little bit and these LEDs just fall right out. And they are super small. Here is the 1206 LED on the right. And you can see it's about twice as big as the original LED that's on the left. But look at how small these things are. I mean, it's almost impossible to pick these up and manage them. And here they are in relation to my finger. The 1206 is on the right and the original LED is there on the left. And finally, I have some blue painter's tape and the PCB itself. I'm going to use the tape to secure the PCB to my table here so it won't slide all around. And then I'm going to first remove the LEDs from the corner of this PCB. And hopefully third time's a charm and I will get these tiny little LEDs working in my watch. Alright, so here's the PCB from the AE1200 watch and you can see there are two LEDs. This is the original LED. It's got a little tiny green line on the right hand side signifying negative polarity or the cathode so you have to make sure that those line up correctly. Here's the other side of the LED and you can see those soldering joints are incredibly tiny, very very small. Alright, let's use some of that painter's tape to secure the board to the table and then I'm going to take a pair of tweezers, hold the LED in place while I take my soldering gun which is heated up to about 300 or 325 and very carefully go in there and try to melt the solder on both sides of the LED, kind of give it a little wiggle as I go to loosen it up and get that thing off. And I'm sorry for the grainy video here, but I really had to zoom in super closely. And it's a little tough to get these shots, but I'm doing my best here. So I went right in there and pulled off the LED and that actually came off pretty easily. And then next I'm going to take a piece of that soldering braid and lay it over the two pads and then place the soldering gun right on top. It'll melt that excess solder underneath and get soaked up by that braid, leaving you with some clean pads. And that's very important because if your pads are not clean on the board, the new solder will not be attracted to it. And that's what happened on the first couple attempts I did here. And it was just kind of a complete mess of so the soldering braid was extremely helpful. All right, so next I'm going to squeeze a little bit of that soldering paste out on my tape and then use the very small toothpick and just slightly dab each one of those two pads with the soldering paste. You really don't need a lot at all. It's best to err on the side of less than more. All right, so there we go. We've got both pads coated with that soldering paste. Let's go grab the LED. So I've got the LED and my tweezers. I'm going to very slowly bring it down, make sure that the polarity is correct. So the negative cathode should be on the right. And then I'm just going to touch the tip of the soldering iron to each of those little globs of soldering paste. And that paste should then become molten and then get soaked up by the clean metal pads underneath. And here's a close-up of the new LED on the board, which so far is looking good. All right, let's repeat that for the other side. So again, I'm going to grab the LED with some tweezers, touch the soldering gun to the solder and get that piece off. Clean it up a little bit with some of that soldering braid so that we've got some nice clean pads to work with. And then finally take some of that solder paste and dab a little bit on both pads. And then once again, grab that new LED and hopefully don't have too shaky hands. And then touch the soldering gun to each of those little globs of solder paste and get that new LED working in there. And here is the finished LCD so far. And it finally, finally worked after three tries. So as you can see, there are the new LEDs in the corner. And I've got the PCB back in the case with the battery attached and everything clipped together. Let's give it a shot. And there you go, two ultra bright, brand new green LEDs for my AE1200. 
So far I am really digging the way this looks. And I'm very relieved because I didn't know if I'd be able to do this. Like I said, it was super hard to get those LEDs in place. But I persevered and finally got them working. And I'm actually quite proud of myself. Thank you very much. And the next step here is to clean up the case and the dial. So I'm going to remove the words from the top of the case. And I'm also going to remove some words from the little insert of the dial there. So let's go ahead and flip that over and pry out that little insert. And then of course let's grab some Goo Gone and get to work with a Q-tip and get those words off that dial. Just dab your Q-tip into some of that Goo Gone and give it some good old elbow grease. Alright so here we go here is the final case and dial. As you can see, I removed a bunch of words from that dial, so we just have the words Casio, the button names, and of course the ring around the top left LCD. And here's the case with the words removed off the top and bottom. I'm not actually going to sand this case, I'm just going to leave it black the way it is. And then finally we have the module itself, which is all snapped back together and ready to be inserted to the case. But we have one last final step to do before we do final assembly. So I wanted to give the dial some more color by putting a gel over it. So you might have seen some of these filters. You can get this online from uh, eBay for about 10 bucks, and this is a huge booklet of camera gels. So each gel has its own transparency value. So I'm looking for a Y value or transparency value of probably 75 or above. So this one is nine so it's not very transparent at all you'd barely be able to read the lcd screen with that one and this lavender blue is 62 percent so that's getting a little better but i definitely want something green for this mod so let's see what other colors we've got here we've got a half pale green we've got this slightly darker green which is not too bad. Actually, I think I kind of like that. That might be a good one to work with. Let's see what else we've got here. We've got this pale green, which is at about 80%, which will work perfectly. And yeah, I think I dig that one. Let's work with that one. So I'm just going to trim off an approximate size that will fit the dial. And then I'm just going to trim it up. Just kind of go by eye. It doesn't have to be perfect since it's going to lie behind that faceplate. And just trim up some of the corners and just make sure it fits in there nicely. And then I'll take that and just give it a little bit of a clean to get any fingerprints or dust off there. And then just simply drop this thing back into the case. And tap it down there with a the screwdriver just to make sure it is secure and flush with the front of the case. Otherwise the module will have trouble fitting in there properly. Then I'll go ahead and drop in the module. And with the AE1200 you have to be a little careful because that module has some small little tabs on it that sometimes get caught on the pushers. So just use a screwdriver to, to make sure that module slides in there properly. And next, let's go grab those four screws and get this stainless steel case back secured to the back of the case. So there we go. There is the new AE1200 style and green dial with double super illuminated green LEDs. Gotta love it. I think it looks super sharp and I'm very happy with how it came out. So now let's go ahead and get on that single pass strap and finish up this mod. Alright, I'm actually going to grab my AE1300 watch to just kind of line it up by eye since the single pass strap is really in there securely. It's tough to move around once you get it in. So let's get this bad boy on the watch.
All right, I think we are finally done with this mod. Let's clean up the face there a little, and there you go. Here's the new AE1200 with a stretchy single pass strap, a green gel overlay to color the dial, and of course two brand new LEDs which light up that dial very brightly. I definitely like it. Here it is next to the previous mod I did on the AE1300 and hopefully you can give it a shot too. It really wasn't that hard. There was quite a bit of a learning curve with those LEDs, but if you follow my instructions, it should be pretty easy to do. So let's wrap this video up by checking this new mod out on my 6.75 inch wrist. Again, the AE1200 has a huge modding community. Just do some searches online and you'll find tons of options. But I'm very pleased with how this came out and I hope you like it too. And here is one more shot of those double super illuminated LEDs and man that thing is bright. I actually turned off one of the lights here in my studio just to give you a better idea about how bright they are but man you could definitely use those as a flashlight outside I would bet. So anyway thanks a ton for checking out this mod. Uh, definitely give it a shot and please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And as usual I would appreciate a subscription so click that subscribe button. And we hope to see you back here soon at Watching Casio. Thanks again and have a great day.